Age of Radio. Missy and I are talking about love changes everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about the everyday tasks that we can do to find our inner peace, to live a life of happiness based on changing some of our behaviors and thoughts. And today we're talking about love and how love changes everything. So how you doing, Missy? I see, uh, for those on video, I, I see you're back indoors. Is, is, has it it's heated hot. up down in the <laughs> south? Or? It's hot. Yeah, it's hot out there. I walked up, walk up outside this morning to take the dogs out, and I was already sweating. So I was like, nope, we're not going to be outside today. We're just going to sit inside at the table. How about you? Looks like you're outside enjoying the weather. I'm outside. I, I don't know where the sun went. It is totally uh foggy and cloudy which has a, a nice uh aura about itself um but no i'm in the 60s so yeah i'm i'm quite comfortable actually i'm so jealous right now you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> you walk outside and everything sweats it's like okay and they have winter jackets on the shelves and i'm like for what it doesn't even get cold until january so we're three months ahead of schedule but that's okay <laughs> You know, it, it, it's again goes all back to perspective. Way back when I, I taught high school uh, down in Florida, and it amazed me coming from the north. And I'm, I'm from cold country, border of Canada and, and the US. And um, yeah, it would get into the 60s, and my students would come in with the heaviest of winter coats, drinking their hot chocolate. Yeah. And I'd have the AC on in the classroom because, you know, yeah, it's 60s. I was warm. I, yeah. <laughs> what, what can I say? And we walk in um, looking like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and they're like begging me to turn the heat on because it's just so cold outside. Right. Right. You know, I'm like, 60s this is like the height of my summer. I mean, right? what, what are you all talking about? So got a little perspective. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so I don't know, like, I just think that, uh, you know, we, we got to talking beforehand and we were talking about, you know, all kinds of things to, to catch up a little bit before, but like the, the thought about love and what really is love and how it changes things. I think that is a, uh, you know, it's all, again, like you said, it's about perception, but it's, um, it's, it's not about like a man loving a woman or, or a, you know, female loving a female. It doesn't matter what sex you're talking about. It's not about people loving people. To me, it's about what we all are, the extension of that life force energy inside of us and extending it to another human being or, you know, to understand that we're all the same as a result of that. You know, and how when you look at people with those eyes, it doesn't matter what they do, what they look like, you know, their behaviors, their actions, like it just changes the way that you look at them and your situation together. I, I would agree that if we can look at another person through the lens or that perspective mm -hmm. of can I love this person in that wider, broader sense of what you're saying? We're not, we're not talking about, um, you know, the, the love of the intimacy of, of relationship, but the right. broader sense that if, if I see another human in the sense of the love, that would change the way that I would view that person. 
and probably change the way that I would want to interact with that person. You know, it's funny because I've been in situations lately where, you know, there you can tell when things trigger you, right? And when they no longer trigger you, you become responsive in a different way, right? And so um, there was something that was in my space that was triggering me. And then all of a sudden, when I when I began to just go like, you know what? They are where they are. I am where I am. We're all walking it mm-hmm. out and we're all figuring it all out to, to come to that self-realization. And when I changed my perspective about the interaction that I was having, I became curious instead of, you know, not like what's wrong with them. It was not like that by any means, but it was right. more like, you know, how can we shift this conversation to become something that we're both enjoying, that we're both wanting to, to explore? And um, it was more of a curiosity and, and it became a very enjoyable and open conversation rather than me putting up the wall of like, I do not want to have this conversation with you. I don't want to enjoy it. This is not fun for me. When I was just that open space to let let my life force work through, you know, or I call mm-hmm. it God or universe or spirit, whatever you want to call it. But when you're that open channel, it is so different than you realize that you are just kind of letting that extension of love flow through you. And it gets to be landing on the person or whoever you're having that experience with. And that's really like, to me, that's letting your light shine, right? Like as we would all, you know, uh, we've all right. heard that saying before, but but it's love. Like, that's the love. It's like, it's not, not just, you know, doing kind things and being kind constantly. It's embodying that that's what we each are, no matter where we are, no matter if we're drug addicts, drug addicts, excuse me. Um, you know, we're having, uh, you know, uh, uh, thievery conversations, like, you know, whatever it is, you can be, the best of the best, you know, whoever the holiest saint is of the world, or you could be what most of society might consider like the bottom of the barrel. And you're still God, we're walking it out. Like you're still on this planet to be here, to teach other people, to learn from other people and to heal the soul and expand on the consciousness, consciousness, excuse me. And when we look at things in that way, you know, which can be challenging, but Mm-hmm. If you say it is, then it is, you know? So when you recognize that it can be easy and you just learn to love each other that way all the time, things just are way more peaceful. And one of the things I, I was thinking as you were talking about all of that, especially on the spiritual side of, of love and is that love is very freeing Mm. that it it allows us to be free of a lot of negativity yeah you know when you think about you know some of the things that are bothering you throughout the day and in many cases what bothers us throughout the day are interactions that we've had with people yeah and it's usually interactions we're having with people we don't know and it takes away our happiness and our inner peace because within those interactions, we place a lot of judgment and objectivity on individuals and the talk about how they in some way wronged us. And therefore, we have now this conflict between us and, you know, the stranger. Yeah. However that plays out, whether that's, you know, somebody cut you off and as you're driving or, you know, whatever it may be versus if we can see that person as a fellow human who is journeying through their day as I am, that can change things and and add more of a subjectivity where maybe I can understand that they cut me off because they weren't thinking and it wasn't personal or they truly are in a hurry. I mean, maybe there is an emergency somewhere that, you know, I'm not aware of, you know, and, and, and they're really trying to get there. But if, if I can begin to understand that out of love, the conflict goes away. Mm-hmm. And if the conflict goes away, then I'm back at 
neutral feeling peace and happiness yeah. and who i am well and the truth is we don't know we don't know i don't know what you're going through you don't know what i'm going through what's happening mentally for me the person that cut us off in traffic we don't know and the thing that that i feel like is the truth here is that love doesn't make up that it does know right the ego makes up that it knows and so mm -hmm. you know, then we project all the things onto this other person, which basically is what's telling us what we have to, to heal in our own selves, you know? And so, so really what it is, is they're showing us information. They're just giving us information so that we understand what's going on. That's where they say 90% of it is subconscious, right? And 10% of it is conscience. So if you have the subconscious constantly showing you through your interactions and experiences with other people, then you have the ability to pay attention, get the information, understand that not only do you not want to do that again, right? You don't want to uh, be a thief or, or be somebody who's, who's a not nice person, right? If you're seeing that in your experience, but you also have the ability to go, okay, I've done that. No matter what it is that you've seen, you've done it because I'm mm -hmm. you and you're me. And that's just the way that I believe. Right. And, um, and so if we, we are holding guilt, then that's what we're doing is projecting it onto those other people. And we realize that there's forgiveness work that needs to be done. And it's like, really, what do you do for forgiveness? It's not like, you know, stand in the mirror and you say, Hey, I forgive you, you know, don't do that again, you know, kind of thing. It's, but it's like getting to the root of remembering who you really are. It's the, I am right? That we, we've all heard it before. I am is the most two important yep. words you can say. But what we're doing is we're saying I'm not. And I this is not my uh, saying. I have to say that I, I heard this last night at a course that I was at, uh, a course in miracles and circles of light with uh, Dr. Carolyn Aziz Fuqua. Mm. And she, you know, she just put it so eloquently, like, whatever it is that you think is true, you will be right, you know? And so you either think that you are, I am, or you think that you are, I am not. And yep. if you think that you are, I am not, whether it comes to love or scarcity or abundance, you know, joy, happiness, it's all those things. She says, disprove whatever you think is something that's holding you back. Just find a way to disprove it. And, um, we had a young man stand up and say, you know, well, like, you know, just as an example, what if you think that every rich person's lucky, you know, and she brought up, she's like, that's not true. That's totally not true. You know, but you look at somebody that's rich that, you know, that has had suffered mental, mental health illness, right? Like Howard Hughes, right. I think is, is who she used as an example or Elvis when, you know, he was ended mm -hmm. up um, addicted to drugs. Um, and of course these kids were young, you know, and they were like, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> this is like, tell them Britney Spears. <laughs> like they'll know who that is. They know who that is, you know, or, you know, like everybody goes through things and luck is really a perception. Right. But, you know, like, if you have something like that, that's, that's, you know, uh, I mean, I've heard the the saying, some people say like, you know, rich people are not nice or rich people are, you know, they just steal and, you know, whatever. And it's like, yep. no, that's not always true. You know, they just feel abundant and it doesn't have anything to do with money. Half of the time, money is just the thing that we all think that we want, but it could be jewels. It could be love. It could be, you know, I like trees or flowers, you know, like who knows it can be an abundance of anything. And if you focus on that abundance, you know, in that form, rather than a currency form or the, the cold, hard, you know, coins and, and paper money that we use, then you'll have abundance everywhere in your life, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I know this is not a, a talk about abundance, but really like, that's really what love is as well. Yeah. Love is the abundance of, I am enough. I am perfect. I am whole. I am complete. There's nothing broken, you know, but we focus on the, I am not the, I am not, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I believe uh, once upon a time, I was, I was trying to give up control, right? You know, like, oh, please, please, please let me not be in control anymore. Please let me just listen to you. Instead of saying, let me lean into your will. Let me let me be a, an open conduit for your, your services, for whatever you need, right? I was trying to give up control, which of course 
led me to have more experiences where I was still controlling, you know, not mm-hmm. to where I was just being that open space for things to ha- happen, you know. So. Well, the the fact of you trying to control not controlling is yeah. pretty controlling. controlling right? <laughs> Yeah, I can, Um, I can honestly admit a a type A, you know, recovery here. (laughs) Yeah. And, and you're not the only one, of course, but, um, um, yeah, that, that I think really, you know, when we look at love is abundance, you know, that becomes what can be the end all. You know, I mean, when people are looking for, well, you know, I'll know when I've reached my pinnacle, I know when I've reached my success or, you know, um, but you're right. It, it's all about the, well, when I get X amount of money or, or when I can have so much in, in the savings, I retire, I've reached my, instead of wondering what is that abundance when we look at love of self and others. Mm. And for me, that goes back to the mindfulness and and the living in the moment that in every moment that we exist, we can have abundance. But as you say, it's it's how we define what that abundance is that makes us happy. Right. You know, in in the past, I've written about, you know, success in terms of redefining success. Mm. You know, that success is not necessarily the power, the title, the money. Yeah. But there's a lot more to it if we want to reframe the perspective and talk about success um, in, in the terms of how have I been able to make a difference in the world and in myself and the people around me and look at that as success. And when we're talking about love, that's got nothing to do with how much money you have. You know, I mean, you you could be the poorest of of the poor and still be able to give love to somebody else. Well, and you're only giving of what you are right? You already are that. So it's not like you have to go seek it out to find it exterior. It's inside of you. And it is something that you, you have to undo. Okay. All of the things that you have thought before that were love, right? Like I, I have to have be in a relationship or my mom doesn't treat me the way I'm, my dad doesn't, you know, my siblings are not, you know, whatever. And like, trust me, I can speak to that. Like, I have a great relationship with my parents and I have a great love in my life as well, mm-hmm. but he adds to my already love, right? And I yep. extend my love and he extends his love. But, you know, for a long time, I've struggled sibling, you know, wise. And I thought, what is wrong with me? Like, why can't I have that closeness that, that mm-hmm. I would love to have? And, you know, uh, where we could just pick up the phone and just, you know, and and I started to recognize I do have it. Like I, it was just some, you know, mystical idea I made up that it should be different than it was. Yep. And, you know, um, and it's not, it's, it's just beautiful. It's perfect. Like just the way that it has always been. And it's not changed. The thing is my thoughts have changed about it. And And so like, even though I have been through things with my siblings, whether it be arguments or, you know, whatever it is, there's nothing in the world that could change the way that I feel for them and about them and what I extend to them as a result of the thoughts that I, I think, you know, and, um, like really like you can, or you can't, it's up to you rather, you know, and it's really love is, is not a feeling. I saw, saw this meme love is not a feeling. It's a decision, you know? And, Mm -hmm. um, I love that because it's like, really does say whether I am or I am not right and the more that you choose the i am again if if i've used the same before if you go to the gym and you're only working out your your right muscle right and this is my right arm i'm just letting you know <laughs> it might be mirrored on your side um but you're going to have one big muscle right and your other muscle is going to be very small and it's if you're not working it out so as soon as you start to flex that muscle and work that muscle out then it's going to get stronger and you'll deplete the other muscle right and so mm-hmm. 
so that's it. It's, it's muscle memory and you'll remember. It's not about like, you've yep. never done it before and I don't know how. You will remember because you came into this world knowing what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone is born in anything but love. Like that, that's all a child knows as it is first born. Yeah. And it's the people around the child. It's, it's the environment of the child in the larger sense that begins to impact those decisions that the child is going to make as that child ages. So I, I really like, you know, when you were saying that love is not a feeling, but, you know, a, a decision. <laughs> And for those on video, there is a wonderful dog who has just appeared. Um, w probably wants to join in on the love conversation. Yeah, but... she's showing me some love. <laughs> See, he, he knew what we were talking about. Yeah, that, that, that's the whole point of this. But um, but yeah, but that that's where I I really like that saying. You know, that love is, is not a feeling but a decision. You know, that it, it really does come down to, um, you know, what am I going to do given who I am, what I have, and what's going to lead me toward that happiness and inner peace. Yeah. You know, and, and it's either conflict or love. Well, you know, and something else that I know I've heard through, you know, my studies this year uh, have been, um, you know, the opposite of fear is love, right? And so like, think of all the things that we're scared about. We're scared about spending money because there's not enough or we're, mm -hmm. we're scared about whether somebody's gonna leave or we're, you know, like when you are loving and in a loving state, you know, and you're just being that extension, there is nothing that can bring fear to you, right? There is nothing that can cause your mind to be at dis-ease, which then causes the disease within your body. And so, yep. you know, and we're not responsible for where other people are. We're not. But the intention, really, the intention is to touch more people, to give them that opportunity to see the possibility, to, 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 you know, to poke that one little bright light into their, their pinhole of darkness, you know, or, or mm -hmm. and, and just make it be known that there's other ways to look at things. And it's really up to you. Like the, yeah. the ego really wants to keep you in the darkness in the seeking of the nothingness and finding nothing ever. And then you have everything that could ever exist on the opposite end of the pole, everything you have love and joy and peace and fun and, and playfulness. And that's what we're all striving for. That's what we're all looking for in this life, but we're trying to fill with sex and money and drugs and, and, you know, the, the things that aren't maybe, um, I guess it's society's norm, right? Those things are society's yeah. norm. And so um, like, I, I'm, I wanna flip the script. I wanna bring mm -hmm. people a new opportunity. And I know you do as well. We wanna open your eyes to seeing that there's another possibility of, of thinking, of living and dispelling the myths that you've learned, whether they're learned behavior or thought up behavior, right? Yep. There, there's a way to dispel the things that you have um, you know, firm grips on, right? Because then if you have a firm grip on something, then you're closed off to mm -hmm. having a new possibility. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if, if we want to focus on my success as having things, right. We can never have enough of those things. Right. You know, so when society tells us all of the things that we must have or do, we're never going to have enough of those. Right. Yeah. But when you're talking about love, we can still say the same thing. You, you may never have enough of it, but there's always enough to go around. Mm. So in other words, we, do, we don't need to say, well, you know, one person has more and I want more of theirs. And therefore I may need to find a way to take theirs. Well, would you, uh, would you, you not harm just... somebody? So Would we, you not we don't have to that look egoic at it that love, way. though. Hmm? I, ha I have to ask this question because what what just came through was 
that that sounds more like egoic love. If they're looking at somebody wishing they had more love, if you are love, which you are, then how could you not be enough of it? Exactly. You are all of it. Like, and, and I love that this, this is like, we all say we're, we're drops in the ocean, right? You know, we're all Mm -hmm. the same. We're one drop in the ocean, but, but you are the whole ocean in your one drop. Again, not my, not my saying that was Carolina Z's Fuqua, but I, oh my gosh, the, the brilliance in just that statement. Like if you are the direct download of the divine, right? That life force energy, which you are in your body and I am in my body. That's the, I am that I am. It's not the, the meat suit. Right. And mm-hmm. so that means that I am that love. So I don't, I will never not have enough of that love unless I, yep. in my thoughts, cut myself off from that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I was saying, because when we look at things mm. to give us yeah. love, happiness, inner peace. It's yeah, we, be we could better run better. out of them or, or somebody has them more than we do. And, yeah. you know, we want that. And yeah. or, you know, yeah, we look at love from the ego, mm. you know, and therefore take it. But if we look at love for what it is. Yeah. Then we have what we need right now. Yeah. And we work the love that we have and we're not going to be needing for anything more. Right. Well, and so, and so that's something else that, you know, you just brought up a a beautiful point is the only way you can experience love is right now because love doesn't know time or space, right? Love is just love. And it's right here in this moment, which is new now and new now and new now, like it's Mm -hmm. each moment. And as long as you're staying with that moment, if you're thinking about the past or replaying things in your head from work earlier this week, or you're anxious about the future and, and whatever else is going on, you know, um, that could potentially go on, then you're living in anxiety and fear. And the only way to solve again is love, which is right here and right now. Yeah. Well, and and that's where I'm always reminded that in the Judeo-Christian Bible and in the Old Testament, when God is asked, you know, what is your name? What what should I call you? Mm. And God's response is, I am. Yes. You know, and and that whole thing of, of, I take that for the mindfulness piece, that whole thing of I am means in the present moment. Mm. So as, you know, the God of our understanding, we can say lives in this present moment, then yes, that's why we have anxiety about the past and the future, Mm. because we're living outside of that spiritual sense, because the spiritual is all about love and all about now. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I love that. That was beautiful. Um, so I'm just curious of what, you know, how do you, how do you ask somebody to put this in play? I think we need to have all of us and I include myself whenever I say all of us, Mm my the logic of my mind first says we we each need to define what we mean by love for ourselves and then the emotional side says just give of the love that you have because love isn't something that we're supposed to be storing up right you know again let's take it away from the goods you know so we can store up you know our money and our gold and whatever we can store those things up and then say, look at my success because I stored up all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Love isn't something you store up. That's something that you give away. Yeah. Well, and giving is is receiving at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, everybody knows that, oh God, I love to give. I, you know, like a lot of us know anyway, that I, they love to give, right? You know, mm-hmm. and but it's it's not 
it's not for the fact that you'll get it back, right? Because you will. Nope. It's always going to come back more. Whatever you're giving out is going to come back more to you. But it's the reward. Like it's mm-hmm. it's the it's the joy on somebody else's face to see that you know you've you've cared enough. You know whether it's yep. money or time or love or just a, an ear to lend, right? And you know maybe that that could be the listener challenge. What do you, what can you give that doesn't cost any money that you will yeah. never run out of, right? That's love. And so yeah. how, how would you choose to do that? Like that, that would be my challenge to you is think about how you choose to do that. Whether it's, you know, giving back to your community, uh, being a big brother, big sister, you know, listening mm-hmm. to a friend, going to take care of an adult elderly relative, you know, or just, just giving, giving of your time to listen to a story of, of somebody who's homeless on, you know, asking for money, exactly like hanging out with them, you know, who knows what that could look like. And, yep. you know, you'll see that like our initial thoughts or judgments about others really is always about us. Right. Yeah. And, oh, and, definitely. and so the more that you spend time with people dispelling those myths, right. Dispelling those judgments, the freer you will be to love and mm-hmm. and you'll see so much change for yourself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And noticing that, yes, it's not the objective, but the reality, the more you give out of love, the more you will receive in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Let's do, let's do I love it. it. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the perfect listener challenge for this. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, yeah, so for all of you listeners, you, you have been challenged and, you know, place it down in, in the comments of um, in whatever platform you're listening on right now and uh, or go to our social media, which, you know, all our websites are, are linked below. So I, I like it. I'd love to hear what uh, people can do with this. Yeah. And, and awesome. don't forget, we love you. Thank you for listening. Exactly. All right. Have a great day, Chris. You too.